Okay, hello. So if you're new to the channel, I use data science to answer questions that are mostly stupid, sometimes serious, and today's video is probably a stupid approach to a very serious topic. So I read all of the comments on the Reddit thread where my video about TikTok mansions was posted, and the general consensus seemed to be that while the analysis was great, top notch, the subject matter of the video was so annoying that most people couldn't bring themselves to watch it. And hey, I get it, which is why I've chosen a far less annoying topic for this video, the 2020 presidential debates. And the 100 million people, started. Jill, the bigger problem that you have, private- So if you did watch the debates, you might be thinking, oh gosh, I hope she's not gonna put me through that experience again. To which I say fear not, because I'm actually here to make that experience better, or at least more bearable. Because for this video, I have created the ultimate drinking game based on data science for the presidential debates. This is obviously empty. <laughs> oh, and just to nip this in the bud, I am 21, so let go. So what I did was that I scraped the transcripts of the first debate between Trump and Biden, and also any speeches, rallies, or events that have taken place since then that either Biden or Trump have spoken at. I then used a text mining technique to determine the most common phrases that Trump and or Biden have said during those events. So the technique I used is called TFIDF, which stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. And the reason I use that method is because it doesn't just count the frequency of phrases, but it also devalues general phrases, right? So if there were certain phrases that were said by both candidates, such as when I'm president, blah, 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 or thank you for that question, blah, 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 blah. That wouldn't be scored. The goal of this is to determine phrases that are both common and unique to either Trump or Biden. And if you wanna take a look at all the events transcripts I scraped or the code I used for this project, those links will be in the description. Okay, starting off with Biden. So Biden's most common phrase is going make sure. And the full phrase is actually going to make sure, but the to was eliminated because I used stop words in this analysis, right? Stop words basically refers to English words that are very common. So to, the, my, a, et cetera. Um, and those words are filtered out in the analysis. That's a common technique. It just ensures that the final results aren't muddled or like incomprehensible. So yes, the phrase going to make sure, Biden has said this a total of 17 times in the speeches that I've scraped. This is just the way he phrases things that he's gonna do when he's president, right? Like when I'm president or as president, I am going to make sure that X, Y, Z happens. Um, it's a way to simultaneously comment on things that he believes Trump has failed on in the past four years and also inspire confidence in the American public by ensuring them that this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, no one's surprised. I don't even know why I'm explaining this in detail. You guys get it. The second most common phrase that Biden says is the Affordable, Affordable Care, Care Act. Act. And he said this 14 times. The Affordable Care Act is obviously becoming more and more relevant because we are in a global pandemic. And also with the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, a new line of attack for the Democrats has been that there is a new potential for the Supreme Court to strike down the Affordable Care Act. So the Affordable Care Act has been a major part of his messaging in the past few weeks, both to remind the American public of what his prior administration did, and also because of those reasons I just said. And the third most common phrase is the United States of America, of being another stop word. This isn't surprising, he is running for president of the United States. But remember how I said that the algorithm I've developed values uniqueness? The fact that this is showing up for a common phrase for Biden means that Trump hasn't said it at all. That's kind of crazy, right? Like I searched through the transcript and I saw that Trump usually says the United States, not the full name, United States of America. But still, I find that very shocking. Um, I don't think there's any commentary to make there, but it's just weird. <laughs> it's weird. And the fourth most common phrase is good, good paying, paying jobs. jobs. Now this is something that Biden has said 10 times and it's usually in reference to his climate plan that will create like clean jobs, but also just the idea that he will create jobs in general, right? Again, I think it speaks for itself. Now, his fifth most common phrase is pay his or their fair share. And he said that 10 times. 
And the reason there's two pronouns there is because he uses it in a couple of different contexts, right? The first context is in referring to that New York Times story that broke the week of the debate that revealed that Trump had only paid $750 in taxes, right? So when Biden is saying, pay his, his fair, fair share. share, he's saying Trump has not paid its fair share in terms of taxes. Biden then often extrapolates that to the broader issue of corporations not paying taxes or not contributing as much as they possibly could to public and social programs. So pay their fair share in that when he is president, he will make sure they pay, pay their, their fair, fair share or whatever the line is. And the sixth most common phrase is 20, 20 million, million people. people. He said this nine times, and this is in reference to the reported statistic that the Affordable Care Act provides health insurance to 20 million people in the United States. So this is just something he uses to convey the gravity of the situation, right? When he says, let me tell you what's at stake here. If the Supreme Court strikes down the ACA, 20 million people will lose their coverage. That's a lot of people. So the seventh most common phrase appears to be Thank, thank, thank. So that's not actually Biden. That's, you know, when the moderator will say things like, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Vice President Biden. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. The scraping script I wrote basically categorized words based off of when it appeared after the name. So whenever it would be like, Mr. Biden, thank you, Mr. My script thought that Biden was saying those thank yous, even though it was the moderator. So it's not him, but I did think that it was funny that it was said often enough to appear in the top 10. But I will also make note of the fact that this pops up for Trump too, and it appears much higher in the list for Trump than it does for Biden. So the real seventh most common phrase is a long one. It's God bless you and God bless you. Uh, he said this eight times, this entire phrase, eight times. And you'll see in this table that the seventh row, the ninth row, the 10th row, the 11th row, that's all a part of this phrase because my script was only looking for three or four word phrases and this was an eight word long phrase so it got split up into chunks. And I believe this phrase was said to attendees of a town hall. So this is not something I would expect to be said at a debate, right? I don't think if Trump is spewing whatever he's spewing, Biden would suddenly be like, God bless you and pre not in a million years, right? But that's what the data says, so. It's part of the rules. The eighth most common phrase is going raise taxes. The crucial words that were filtered out being not and to, right? The full phrase is not, not going, to, going raise to raise taxes. taxes. He has said this five times. Again, I think we all know why he said this. One of Trump's major criticisms or lines of attack, I should say, against Biden is that his plan will raise taxes. So Biden is often put into the position where he has to refute that point and say, no, I am not going to raise taxes. Duh, we've all heard him say this. The ninth most common phrase is create 18 million. The full phrase is, will create 18.6 million, million jobs. More jobs. He said this six times. This is again, another memorized statistic that he has that his plan is estimated to create 18.6 million jobs. I think that you can pretty much bet that he will say this during the debate. And the 10th most common phrase and the final phrase is running proud Democrat. The full phrase is running, running as, as a proud, a proud Democrat. Democrat. He said this seven times. And I should note that when he says this, it's usually followed up by something like, yes, I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I will govern for the American people. So it's something that reaffirms his political party, obviously, but also is the precursor to a more broad statement, which inspires unity and basically the exact opposite of what's happened in the past four years. So what a perfect cap to the rules for Biden. And after cleaning everything up and replacing the stop words that were filtered out, here are the final rules for drinking while former Vice President Joe Biden is speaking. Now let's move on to Trump. So Trump's number one most common phrase is greatest, the greatest economy, economy in the history. history. And Trump has said this nine times. Kind of absurd given that that's not what's happening right now. Uh, but if you look at the context in which he says that phrase, it's usually something like, I had to close down the greatest economy in history, or even something like, I was given the most failing economy in history and I turned it into the greatest economy in history. Yeah, it, like, I mean, I think we all know why he's saying this is to inspire confidence in his leadership, to remind the American public that 
you know, he hasn't been president just this year when everything has gone to shit. He's also been president for previous years when things were going to shit for some people, but we're mostly good for other people and we're really great for an even smaller amount of people. So the second most common phrase is, let, let me, me just, just tell something. you. He said this nine times. That's just sort of the way he introduces either anecdotes or something he would know in his tenure or as president. It's just a simple, effective way to convey authority, right? Like, let me just tell you, blah, 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 blah. Third most common phrase, think, think, think. We've been over this. That's actually the moderator, not Trump himself. So the true third most common phrase is years ago said. The actual phrase being four, four years, years ago. ago they or he or she said. So this is something Trump says a lot where he's like, four years ago, they said this about me. They said I couldn't win. They said I was this, 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 and now I'm president. It's like a sly way to make himself the underdog in this, even though he is the literal president and the most powerful man in the country. I mean, yes, Trump is a storyteller. He likes to hearken back, especially to those times four years ago. So the phrase four years ago, just that on its own, he said that about 12 to 13 times, but if he's following it up by a they said or whatever, uh, four years ago, blank said, he's only said that about eight times. The fourth most common phrase is sleepy, sleepy Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. Yikes. And he said this seven times. We all know Trump likes to make nicknames for people that he's running against, especially back in 2016. This really came to shine, but nowadays, not as much. He really only has one main opponent, and Joe Biden is his opponent, and Sleepy Joe Biden is that nickname. Moving on, the fifth most common phrase is just, just want, want to, to think. And it, when I first saw this, I thought maybe this was in reference to the doctors who treated him or his staff who stood by him or anyone else who supported him in this time when he was literally diagnosed with coronavirus. But no, it was actually in reference to audiences and attendees who showed up to his in-person events, which I guess makes more sense. And he has said this six times. And again, just like the God bless you phrase that Biden had, this is one of those phrases that is likely not going to come up in the debate. This is likely something that he will say directly to the American people, not to Biden. <laughs> The sixth most common phrase is half million dollars. The full phrase is three, three and, and a half million, million dollars. dollars. This is in reference to the president's claim that Hunter Biden received three and a half million dollars from the ex-mayor of Moscow's wife, I believe. And Trump has said this 11 times. I do want to make it very clear that this is a claim. I haven't seen any reporting that has neither conformed nor denied this. So I just don't want to be spreading any misinformation and the seventh most common phrase is deadly, deadly sanctuary. sanctuary. He said this four times and you know what? Leave it to our president to invoke divisive culture war issues in a time of national crisis. I just, I don't <laughs> like, I like, I guess you could say the same thing about the Affordable Care Act, but that seems very relevant to this time, this moment that we're having, whereas immigration and sanctuary cities does not seem to be front of mind for really anyone except perhaps Trump and his base. I don't know, I'm sort of perplexed by this actually. I just, I don't, I don't get it. So the next most common phrase is, I don't know, I don't know. Very inspiring words from our president. Now just the phrase, I don't know, Donald Trump has said that 40 times in my database, whereas Joe Biden has only said it seven times. But the phrase, I don't know, I don't know, where he says it right after one another or says it with a couple of words in between, he said it six times. He actually repeats things quite a lot. When you like look at the transcripts, it's sort of a signature pattern in his speech. The ninth most common phrase here is law, law enforcement group. group. So this is obviously when he's talking about his endorsements and Biden's lack thereof of endorsements from a law enforcement group. He said this phrase eight times, like the issue of law enforcement, policing, criminal justice, um, and race are also obviously very relevant right now. Anyhow, the Republicans like to say that they're the party of law and order and keeping with that messaging, Trump often touts the fact that he has endorsements of law enforcement groups. And the 10th and final most common phrase is make America great. And I think everyone knows what the next word is, right? Make, Make America, America great, again, great again. He said this only six times. 
Not that much, not that much at all. Perhaps because he is president. So make America great again implies that he hasn't been doing that good of a job, right? Just like with his phrase four years ago, this is hearkening back to good old 2016 when he delivered that shock victory. So after cleaning everything up, here are the final rules for Trump. And let's just flash the Biden rules up again on the screen if you want to take a screenshot and maybe play along at the next debate. So yeah, that's that on that. Please remember to drink and vote responsibly. I'll include a link to register to vote, but I think the deadlines have mostly passed by now. I imagine a lot of you people watching have already voted because the mail-in numbers are surreal. Not surprising. I don't think there's a single undecided voter in America left. Like, and if you are undecided in this election, if you have no opinions at all about either of the candidates, uh, wow, I'm impressed. I'm genuinely, I don't know if impressed is the word, but amazed, shocked, surprised. And in that vein, I don't think anyone is gonna be watching the debates to be informed about the candidates because they're undecided, which is why I felt like this was an okay sort of analysis to make. And I know people had asked me to do other sort of political analyses, um, and I would have been interested in that. And if this was any other election, I would have. But honestly, in any sort of analysis like that, you necessarily have to present Trump and Biden as equals. But the reality of this election is that it's all about Trump, right? It's a referendum on him. I think the single most important factor that is driving votes is however you feel about Trump. If you like him, you're voting for him. If you don't, you're voting for Biden, right? You could replace Biden with anyone and it would be the same, in my opinion. But yeah, I didn't feel comfortable doing any sort of analysis that didn't convey that point and I couldn't think of a way to do it that would safely and responsibly do that. Which is why I landed on this idea because I thought it was fun, it was light enough where hopefully people won't take too much stock in what I'm saying and the comments won't devolve into a shit show. I trust you guys, y'all are very thoughtful. From my analytics, only about 50% of my viewers are from the US, so sorry to all my non-US viewers. I imagine this video is probably very boring, and if you're still watching, thank you. If you're still watching and you're not subscribed, come on, man. Hit me with the subscribe. But yeah, I'll catch y'all in the next one, whenever that may be. I know that I said I would stop doing weekly uploads, but I wanted to get this video out before the next debates on October 22nd and the 29th, which is literally five days before the election, but yeah. As always, there will be a hint as to what my next video is about at the end of this video. And with that, I'll catch y'all in the next one.